In the midst of this stillness, it was rather startling when Colin half lifted his head and exclaimed in a loud, suddenly alarmed whisper, Who is that man? Dickon and Mary scrambled to their feet. Man? they both cried in low, quick voices. Colin pointed to the high wall. Look, he whispered excitedly. Just look. Mary and Dickon wheeled about and looked. There was Ben Weatherstaff's indignant face glaring at them over the wall from the top of a ladder. He actually shook his fist at Mary. If I weren't a pachelder and thou was a wench of mine, he cried, I'd give thee hiding. He mounted another step threateningly, as if it were his energetic intention to jump down and deal with her. But as she came towards him, he evidently thought better of it, and he stood on the top step of his ladder, shaking his fist down at her. I never thought much of thee, he harangued. I couldn't abide thee first time I set eyes on thee. A scrawny, butter meek face, the young bism, all as asking questions and porking thy nose in where it weren't wanted. I never knowed how thou got so thick with me. If it hadn't been for that robin dratting, then Weatherstaff, called out Mary, finding her breath. She stood below him and called up to him with a sort of gasp. Ben Weatherstaff, it was the robin who showed me this way. And then it did seem as if Ben really would scramble down on her side of the wall. He was so outraged. Ah, young badden, he called down to her. Layin' thy backness on a robin. Not but what is impudent enough for anything. Him showeth thee way. Him, ha! <laughs> thy young nout. She could see his next words burst out because he was overpowered by curiosity. However it, this world did thou get in. It was the robin who showed me the way, she protested obstinately. He didn't know he was doing it, but he did. And I can't tell you from here while you're shaking your fist at me. He stopped shaking his fist very suddenly at that very moment and his jaw actually dropped as he stared over her head at something he saw coming over the grass towards him. At the first sound of his torrent of words, Colin had been so surprised that he'd only sat up and listened as if he were spellbound. But in the midst of it, he'd recovered himself and beckoned imperiously to Dickon. Will me over there, he commanded. Will me quite close and stop right in front of him. And this, if you please, this is what Ben Weatherstaff beheld and which made his jaw drop. A wheeled chair with luxurious cushions and robes which came towards him looking rather like some sort of state coach because a young Raja leaned back in it with royal command in his great black-rimmed eyes and a thin white hand extended haughtily towards him and it stopped right under Ben Weatherstaff's nose. It was really no wonder that his mouth had dropped open. Do you know who I am? demanded the Raja. How Ben Weatherstaff stared. His red old eyes fixed themselves on what was before him as if he were seeing a ghost. He gazed and gazed and gulped a lump down his throat and did not say a word. Do you know who I am? demanded Colin still more imperiously. Answer! Ben Weatherstaff put his gnarled hand up and passed it over his eyes and over his forehead. And then he did answer in a queer, shaky voice. Who thou art? he said. Aye, that I do, with thy mother's eyes staring at me out at thy face. Lord knows how thou come here, but thou art the poor cripple. Colin forgot that he ever had a back. His face flushed scarlet and he sat bolt upright. I'm not a cripple, he cried out furiously. I'm not. He's not, cried Mary, almost shouting up the wall in her first indignation. He's not got a lump as big as a pin. I looked and there was none, not one. Ben Weatherstaff passed his hand over his forehead again and gazed as if he could never gaze enough. His hand shook, his mouth shook and his voice shook. He was an ignorant old man and a tactless old man, and he could only remember the things that he had heard. Thou, thou hasn't got a crooked back, he said hoarsely. No, shouted Colin. Thou hasn't got crooked legs, quavered Ben more hoarsely yet. It was too much. The strength which Colin usually threw into his tantrums rushed through him now in a new way. Never yet had he been accused of crooked legs. 
even in whispers, and the perfectly simple belief in their existence, which was revealed by Ben Weatherstaff's voice, was more than Rajah flesh and blood could endure. His anger and insulted pride made him forget everything but this one moment, and filled him with power he had never known before, and almost unnatural strength. Come here, he shouted to Dickon, and he actually began to tear the coverings off his lower limbs and disentangle himself. Come here, come here, this minute! Dickon was by his side in a second. Mary caught her breath in a short gasp and felt herself turn pale. He can do it, he can do it, he can do it, he can! She gabbled over to herself under her breath as fast as she could. There was a brief, fierce scramble. The rugs were tossed on the ground. Dickon held Colin's arms. The thin legs were out and the thin feet were on the grass. Colin was standing upright. Upright, as straight as an arrow and looking strangely tall. His head thrown back and his strange eyes flashing lightning. Look at me, he flung up at Ben Weatherstaff. Just look at me. You, just look at me. Oh, he's straight as I am, cried Dickon. He's as straight as any lad in Yorkshire. What Ben Weatherstaff did, Mary thought queer beyond measure. He choked and he gulped, and suddenly tears ran down his weather-wrinkled cheeks as he struck his old hands together. Hey, he burst forth, the lies that fault tells. Thou art as thin as a laugh and as white as a wraith, but there's not a knob on thee. Thou may come on yet. God bless thee. Dickon held Colin's arm strongly, but the boy had not begun to falter. He stood straighter and straighter, and he looked Ben Weatherstaff in the face. I'm your master, he said, when my father is away, and you are to obey me, and this is my garden. Don't dare say a word about it. You get down from that ladder, go out onto the long walk, and Miss Mary will meet you and bring you here. I want to talk to you. We did not want you. But now you'll have to be in the secret. Be quick. Ben Weatherstaff's crabbed old face was still wet with that one queer rush of tears. It seemed as if he could not take his eyes from him. Straight Colin, standing on his feet, with his head thrown back. Hey, lad, he almost whispered. Eh, hey, my lad. And then remembering himself, he suddenly touched his hat, gardener fashion, and said, Yes, sir. Yes, sir, and obediently disappeared as he descended the ladder.